Hello and welcome to the new series of Drishti IAS. I am Pooja and in this segment today we are going to discuss in brief about the momentous history that has been created by the James Webb Space Telescope as it sends pictures that are extremely clear and never seen in history before. So these are the topics that we are going to cover step by step and brief analysis will be done of each and every topic under here. And also from the perspective of prelims, the James Webb Space Telescope, Nebula, the highlights of observation, what has been observed so far, and the life cycle of a star. This is with respect to James Webb Space Telescope itself. From the perspective of mains examination, space technology is the main concern over here. So let us first of all talk about what is the news. The news is that James Webb Space Telescope has sent us pictures of the various, you can say, the mysteries of the space, the universe, and it has done so to make history. Why? Because these pictures are so clear that they were never caught so before this particular telescope. As you can see, the pictures, these galaxies, the pictures, the binary system of stars that it has captured, plus the many other pictures, like this is the walls of the nebula, walls of the uh, mysteries of the entire universe, how the collision is occurring so that we can understand how our earth originated or how our universe originated in the first place itself. So what is James Webb Space Telescope? It basically works on an infrared observatory. It is an infrared observatory that means whatever observation it makes, it makes in the wavelength, infrared wavelength, okay, and it was launched by a Ariane 5 rocket and from that was from French Guinea in South America, okay, and it was done so on December 21, uh, December 25th, 2021. It is called the world's most powerful telescope and rightly so. Some people also say, some people or what, the thing is that it is seen as a, you can say, the successor of the Hubble telescope. Now we will talk about that as well. First of all, we should know why do we even need telescope. First of all, uh, understanding such necessities, then only we can know how um, how much of a technology we are in a need of, so that we can discover more and more mysteries. So the first stars and galaxies they actually originated 300 million years after the Big Bang. The Big Bang happened. The the Big Bang allegedly happened. 13.8 billion years ago okay so 300 million years after big bang we saw the first stars and light travels with a velocity of 300,000 km per second this makes us understand the traveling of the light makes us understand uh, how far away the galaxies were created okay light from a distant object will take time to reach us on earth and that is how uh, the telescopes they serve as a time machine okay so objects that are very far, far away, they need very giant telescopes so that more clearer picture can be collected through the help of light. And light from distant object is stretched out by expansion of the universe. Whenever ex expansion of the universe takes place, the light gets bended in such a manner that it is distorted. So it might it take much more time than we actually uh, approximated. Okay. And this drives the radiation from the visible range into the infrared and that is why James Webb Space Telescope came into the picture. Now, this is the biggest infrared space telescope ever built. It is it is having a mirror of 6.5 meter primary. That is the first mirror, the mirror that is used on the primary basis. Okay, and the telescope infrared, which is an infrared telescope, it collects more photons than Hubble. More photons means more clearer picture, and it can see even in the faintest flicker from most distant region and that is why it is known as the uh, you can say the um, most powerful telescope and it is referred to as the successor of Hubble. Hubble basically captured the galaxies stars in optical and ultraviolet wavelengths okay. It also had certain infrared abilities as well but JWST has its base entirely on infrared light and it sheds light on some of the older stars and galaxies that means the older stars which uh, you know shed their light in the infrared manner they can get captured by JWST. It will orbit the sun Hubble used to orbit the earth so this is the difference and JWST will be too far away to be serviced and repaired 
and as we know it is basically here at the Lagrangian 2 at the L2 point it is situated okay and you can see this that is the uh, L1 point and here we have the sun okay sun is over here then here we have the earth and then moon and this is a Lagrangian 2 point now uh, if we talk about Lagrangian 2 uh, Lagrangian points are those points where we can say that uh, the objects are pulled in such a manner by two heavy bodies that the orbit makes the object to stay stable okay and because this is at L2 the James Webb Space Telescope it won't be able to be serviced like the Hubble telescope, uh, telescope. So if we talk about the Lagrangian points it is basically it was postulated in the 18th century only and it was named after the Italian French mathematician Joseph Louis language okay and the five earths and language points are locations where small objects they can orbit this uh, sun or the earth steadily because the gravity pulls uh, the object in such a manner that it remains stable okay so here i try to make you understand about the lagrangian points let us move on and talk about these goals what are the goals of the james webb space telescope these are the many goals search for first galaxies or luminous objects from, formed after the Big Bang, okay? And also to determine how galaxies evolved after that. Observe the formation of stars from the first stage to the formation of planetary system. Measure the physical and chemical properties as well, including our own solar system, and investigate the potential of extraterrestrial objects as well. So, observations which were made, first of all, the important observations from the perspective of prelims is SMACS, 0723 which is a cluster of galaxies where the first stars were born that means origin of the universe Carina nebula basically shows the birth of new stars whereas in its contrast the southern ring nebula image it details dying star okay so uh, you can see extremities have been observed now in stephen's quintet the jwst it has captured the cataclysmic cosmic collision of galaxies the the image that i showed you over here okay and also along with these many observations which have been done then the presence of water vapor has also been seen in the wasp 96 b that is a exoplanet it is an exoplanet that is also like the earth revolving around a sun like star okay moving on if we talk about other observations that means the observations which we have discussed right now what are the other points related to that the smax 0723 it is a noted cluster of galaxies and it dates back to 5.12 billion years old okay and uh, you can see southern constellation of volans 4.6 billion years ago and it is about the same time when the sun evolved and the earth evolved okay so these galaxies were also taken care of or these galaxies were also observed by hubble planck chandra space telescope but the level of clarity that we got from james webb space telescope was not matched by any of these okay now this cluster smacks 0723 is massive and it also takes into account the einstein's general relativity theory because uh, after the collision and after uh, a star dies what happens there is a lot of collision uh, occurring and that is why the distortion occurs into the fabric of space and time this is fabric of space and time whenever the sp uh, the star will burst out it will die supposedly it will shed so much energy that the space-time fabric also gets distorted and that decides the uh, you can say the distance the uh, distance as in the time light takes to travel to us so the distance will also be impacted by that so the light from behind it bends through the massive clusters that gives rise to gravitational lensing effect okay and with gravitational lensing effect we can see that some galaxies they appear distorted in arc shape some are split into multiple uh, images and some are magnified so this is the einstein's relativity general relativity theory okay then comes another thing so that the kaleidoscope of colors in the image captured by the telescope mid infrared instrument these are false colors that means they might not occur so to our naked eye but they are made to be occur so because we need to understand which region contains what elements like the galaxies that appear blue in the image they contain star but they are uh, but very little dust okay and the cosmic objects enveloped by these dust they appear red 
objects which are rich in hydrocarbon and other chemicals they uh, other chemical compounds they are green in color so they are false colors okay moving on if we talk about the stunning image of uh, carina nebula the stunning image of an edge of the ngc 332 carina nebula is known as the cosmic cliff this is like a cliff of cosmos it is 7600 light years away from the earth so these are the preliminary facts okay life cycle of a uh, life cycle of a star if we talk about then stars and star clusters these are formed inside giant gas clouds which are known as nebulas these are made up of gas and dust okay and these have a diameter of about 100 light years they also have mass of 6 million solar masses okay density is just 100 atoms per cubic centimeter and the visible light is basically obscured by the thick dust it goes into the uh, it goes into making the stars looking opaque so the clearer the bigger the telescope the better the telescope that we have it can penetrate into those dust and look at the stars more profoundly and more impactfully okay life cycle of a star as you can see this is the birth stage how it happens giant gas or cloud nebula gives rise to protostar and t tauri phase okay and then comes the main sequence low and medium mass stars then high mass and massive star these go into becoming what red giant the low and medium mass stars and the high mass one they become red super giant then comes the death phase when the red giants become planetary nebula then white dwarf and then eventually black dwarf with respect to the red super giant supernova can occur which gives rise to neutron star and black hole okay so you can take a screenshot of this moving on if we talk about how stars are made visible to the telescope now when the infant stars they begin to shine what they do they blow away the interstellar matter that means whatever matter is contained over here the star blows away these matters out and then that region becomes devoid of gas it appears in the image in the shape of bubbles and cavities okay and the mountains and valleys in the interstellar medium shaped by the radiation it also starts to occur and the star which is located in the center of the bubble these are of the frame okay and the other phenomenon that one sees in the image they include ionized gas hot dust wafting away so many particles along with stars are also visible okay so the thing over here is that the better we get a telescope to become more capable of penetrating th through these gas and dust the more cavities the more mountainous terrain that we can see in a star because uh, earlier also moon used to be thought of as without any blemish but galileo made sure that he brought out to the world that it is yes full of blemishes like mountains and holes okay and the nir cam and miri instruments are the main ones over here these cover wavelength which range from 0.6 to 28 micron meter will enable us to it will enable us to carry the very early phase of the the star the star formation okay then comes the eight burst nebula it is the southern ring nebula or ngc 3132 it is a planetary nebula we did talk about planetary nebula over here right red giant becomes planetary nebula in the death phase and here eight burst nebula is the dying galaxy it's a dying nebula you can say so the it is present where in the constitution vela approximately 2500 light years away and the gas shells which have formed uh, from the cast of outer layers of a dying star dying star will expel its outer layer and also try to expand and then it will contract it will once again start to emit energy and it will have the lease of life last stages of life the expelled shell is pushed by the radiation expanding the space like having rings around a central star and that gives rise to the binary star binary star that we uh, had over here where did it go the picture this one okay this is the eight burst nebula that we are talking about the blue shield and the red shield okay moving on to the next set of information that we have for today is that eight burst nebula has a lot of process like i told you how the life ends of a star through that diagram so over time successful successive waves of expe uh, expelled outer sh shells they surround the stars like concentric circles and the remaining core of the star ultimately becomes a faint glowing white dwarf and after that after million of years millions of years it becomes a black dwarf okay and the near infrared light is false colored blue the mid infrared light is red and this is the 
level of JWST. Okay, moving on, if we talk about the cosmic vaults, this is basically in the constellation Pegasus. It is 290 million light years away from the Earth, and it ha it is a bunch of five galaxy. They are bound with other, which is known as the Stephen's Quintet, the third image that I show you, showed you, which was the cosmic vaults. Okay, and two of them are currently in the process of merging into one another, which will give rise to, of course, another collision and maybe a black hole. Then what is the hunt for extraterrestrial because uh, the WASP is also an exoplanet which has been observed, the WASP 96b. It is orbiting a star named WASP 96. Now it is 1150 light years away from the sun. It has a mass half that of Jupiter going around the central star by every 3.4 days. Okay. By comparing the star spectrum and the starlight passing through the planet's atmosphere, astronomers can discern the molecular composition considerable amount of water vapor is also present so this is a very important point you can see water vapor is also present that means it can also have the presence of water then it is so hot it has blistering heat no life can survive over here but water vapor hydrocarbons methane and other atmospheric elements can be present which when observed will give rise to our understanding of the origin of the universe and if we are able to find the origin of the universe we will be able to find uh, the um, answers to many questions that we have what happens to the earth what happens to our solar system and further scientific expansion can take place we can have colonies over there for scientific expansion for scientific experiments so that we can have a better life on earth now this is the prelims question that we have Consider the following statements with respect to james webb space telescope it orbits the earth like the hubble it will observe the cosmos in optical and ultraviolet wavelength so we have to select the correct answer okay so that's it thank you so much for watching